Hi guys, so today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and sort of review for you some of the films I have watched recently. So a few of the other booktubers I follow like Vanessa and Mercedes, both of whom I'll link down below, do videos like this where they just, you know, <laughs> like with the reading wrap ups talk about the films they've watched recently and I enjoy watching them. I don't know if this is something I want to do regularly, I don't know if this is something you're interested in. But I just felt like recently there were some films I'd watched that I wanted to talk about. So why not give it a shot? We will, we will see, shall we? So without further ado, let's get into the films. I haven't actually been to the cinema in months. And usually I really like to go to cinema, particularly by myself. I think the cinema is a solo affair. And uh, <laughs> I think I enjoy it more when I go without other people. But I haven't gone to cinema recently. So everything I've watched recently have been on DVD or on Netflix and most of them have been quite old. <laughs> there hasn't been a lot of recent releases so I'm going to work backwards because I think that'll be an easier way for me to remember but what I actually watched last night was All the President's Men. This is my mum's favourite film <laughs> of all time and if you haven't heard of it before, it follows the two journalists who investigated and exposed the Watergate scandal, um, which was uh, to do with President Nixon, who was the incumbent president at the time, running to be re-elected, and um, his team had been uh, spying and sabotaging the Democrats, and uh, it's all, like, it's a real story. So this is a film of the, the thing that really happened not that long ago in American history. And I'd never watched it before and probably everybody that's seen these two films will say this but I would definitely compare it to something like Spotlight which is a more recent film some of you might have seen that follows a team of investigative journalists um, exposing the scandal in which um, priests had been molesting young boys. Spotlight's amazing, I love Spotlight, I've seen it twice I think um, and I've really enjoyed All the Presidents Men. I can see why it's my mom's favourite film, it definitely reminded me of Spotlight, it's very slow paced, um, a lot of it's quite quiet, um, but it's full of beautiful shots. There's a small cast, mainly of the team at this newspaper and then some of the people involved in Watergate and they were working for the Republican Party and it predominantly follows the two main journalists who are played by Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman. The film itself came out in 1976, only a few years after the, the initial Watergate scandal um, and I believe it's based on a book that is the non-fiction story of the uh, of, of the of the incident and yeah it's it's really good it's very slow paced but very well done and it, it's not particularly action packed or dramatic if that's what you're looking for but I love these kind of studies of um, what these journalists had to go through and particularly at that time um, obviously the technology was very different from now so it's great fun watching them use like so much like on like conference calls and um, using the typewriters and stuff, I think it's just like a nice experience being in that time watching the investigative journalism. It also makes you deeply concerned for the state of journalism today. Not all journalists, but there's definitely um, a sort of strand of journalism in uh, the 21st century which has absolutely no interest in actually servicing the world. <laughs> um, but yeah, great film, would recommend. Uh, another film that I recently watched was Brassed Off. So Brassed Off is for fans of films like The Full Monty and Pride, which if you've seen my favourite films of all time video, you know are two of my favourite films of all time. So it's definitely my kind of film. It's an emotional, hard-hitting sort of comedy. <laughs> it was made in the 1990s and follows the miners at one of the last remaining British mines um, as it's being assessed for closure. Uh, it's after the miners strike when most of the mines are being closed down and now it has come time for their mine to be assessed um, whether it's uh, you know a lucrative business to keep open and obviously this means all of the miners are threatened with redundancy and losing their jobs and um, like with um, most um, mines these are in areas where uh, the mines are the main uh, source of employment so this is a massive deal for all of the young men in particular who are working down the mines and it's following the miners in particular who are members of the Collier Brass Band and at the same time their brass band is trying to win a competition 
a young woman comes to the town and uh, gets involved in the brass band but they don't realise at first you do as a watcher, they don't know at first that she is in fact there to assess the mind. So obviously it's about all of their relationships, it has a lot of recognisable British actors in it, in particular one that I'm sure most of you will be familiar with and that's Ewan McGregor. I really enjoyed this film, it was really emotional, really hard hitting, I can't imagine having watched it at the time when this was actually going on um, but even looking back you know how seriously this affected um, people's lives and um, how real it is and, and you know so emotional but it has that lovely undertone of you know real humour, the everyday humour that occurs in people's lives um, and yeah it, it was lovely, I really enjoyed it. Still prefer Pride in the Full Monty they're still in the top two, but it was a really good film. Now, I have been recently on a bit of a quest to watch more films set in antiquity. I have a serious lack of experience with films set in ancient Greece or ancient Rome or based on um, classical mythology. So I have been trying to watch some of the classics. Now, one of the ones I watched recently was the original Clash of the Titans, which has had a remake that I might watch, but the original one came out in 1981. And one of the reasons I was really excited for this was, was because the special effects were by Ray Harryhausen, who did the special effects for Jason and the Argonauts, which are fabulous, and I love Jason and the Argonauts. I enjoy Clash of the Titans, not as much as the uh, the Jason and the Argonauts film, but I did enjoy it. It has that very classic, epic, classical mythology film feel to it, but it's less about big wars and battles than it is about our one hero Perseus um, and his journey. There's Medusa, there's the Kraken, there's the gods. Maggie Smith even plays one of the goddesses in it. It is not accurate to classical mythology. Um, Maggie Smith's character in real classical mythology is the mother of Achilles, but in this um, version she is um, the mother of a completely made up character called Calabos. I keep getting the name confused with Caliban, but I think Caliban's from Shakespeare's Tempest. Calabos? I think so anyway. Doesn't really matter what he's called. So it, it's not one for quoting when um, you're talking about classical mythology, but most of the characters are actually from classical mythology and it's not all completely wrong. Um, Perseus does have to save Ariadne from um, the sea creature, which is a classical myth. And um, yeah, it was good fun. It's not my favourite film of all time. I don't find myself falling in love with that many films set in antiquity, but I enjoyed it. It was good fun. I won't complain. Yeah, it was pretty good. I have then watched a few other films set in antiquity which I have more mixed feelings about. First of all, I watched 300 starring Gerard Butler, which I genuinely think is one of the worst films I've ever watched in my entire life. It is so appalling. Now, what I will give it credit for is it's very beautifully shot. Um, it's got a very nice, you know, colour palette. You know, it's been brought together very nicely. It's visually quite appealing in terms of cinematography. It is otherwise atrocious. It is so racist. It's um, basically racist soft porn. Um, that's what I would describe it as. Um, and you could say the way that the Persians are orientalised is appalling. And you could say, yeah, well, the Greeks in antiquity orientalised them. Sure, sure, sure. But even in, in the ancient Greek texts, they don't um, turn the Persians into ninja trolls. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just awful, and um, I know it's based on a graphic novel, so maybe we can blame the graphic novel for some of the atrocities, sure. Uh, they also made up, so this isn't even part of the historical uh, story, but they made up a deformed character simply to make him responsible for um, the bad things that happen. Um, this is based on a real historical event, the 300 Spartan soldiers that fought against the Persians. Uh, yeah, this is really bad. Really, really bad. And I know so many people that enjoy it that, it, you know, please, please somebody else, please somebody else tell me they hated it. It would mean a lot to me. I did find um, somebody else who hated it in my uh, friend at work, Elle, so thankfully I know I'm not completely alone, but I'd love to hear from more of you who didn't like it. That's all I have to say on that one, really would not suggest watching it. I also watched Troy. Yes, I had never seen Troy. Troy is based on the classical myth of uh, the Trojan War 
and it follows the hero Achilles played by Brad Pitt, it's got loads of other famous actors in it, it's very Hollywood um, and I heard so many bad things about this film that I went into it with such low expectations I think it could only do well and I thought it was okay, especially after watching 300. <laughs> so I'm going to say one of the things I liked about Troy is how how inaccurate it was because for somebody who's very familiar with the myth of the Trojan War, of Achilles, Menelaus, Agamemnon, Hector, Paris, Helen, all of those characters, and the Trojan horse, all of these things that happen, they changed so many things I never knew what was coming. <laughs> I genuinely could not say I knew exactly what was going to happen, and things surprised me. And that was quite fun. I think if you go into it aware of how many inaccuracies they are, it's an alright film, but I quite liked it. Um, it's not the best film ever made. I'm probably never going to watch it again. But there was something I quite enjoyed about how they twisted the myth. And I'm okay with that. Then, for ancient films, I watched Fellini's Satyricon with my friend Jill. So this film is originally in Italian, so it's a subtitles film, and um, Fellini is a very famous Italian director, and his films are truly mad. And I knew how mad the, the satiricon was going into this film, having read it, it's a piece of Latin literature written by Petronius and it's just a mad, sort of comical, sexually explicit novel. Uh, I knew how mad that book was. It's like Fellini added a whole new level of mad. <laughs> it's so beyond describable. And I feel deeply affected by this film in a way that I'm not sure I'll ever recover from. Um, <laughs> It's not for the squeamish, it's very explicit scenes throughout and one of the things I noticed a lot was you'd be watching it and there'd be this very explicit scene, lots of nudity and indulgence and the book is a commentary on um, the uh, Roman elite and how indulgent they are and that comes through in the film and you'll be getting these, these scenes are very visually, visually explicit and suddenly the camera will pan and one of the characters will be looking you directly in the eyes from the camera and it's very disturbing. I cannot make up my mind about how I feel about this film. It was an intense viewing experience and sure I don't know what I expected given the book. It's maybe a story that didn't need to be visualised. It's a story that belonged on the, the page. <laughs> I think. And I love the book. I think the book's brilliant and absolutely hilarious. I don't think the film was as funny. I don't think the film captured the humour quite as much, um, but it captured a lot of the other elements of the book. Lots of vulgar Latin. Um, <laughs> I noticed that a lot with the subtitles. Characters would say things and they just subtitle it vulgar Latin. And I don't know Latin, so I don't know what they were saying. <laughs> Um, but it's a film that has been so highly praised that I am sure it is amazing and I am not a film connoisseur by any means. I don't think my taste in films is particularly highbrow, so I am sure this film deserves the praise it got. It's really one to watch for yourself. And lastly for this video, a true classic that I watched was Casablanca. Casablanca is my dad's favourite film, or perhaps tied for first place with the Maltese Falcon, and I had never seen it. This is a true classic of cinema, and I am so glad that I finally saw it. It is a wonderful film. It stars Ingrid Bergman and Humphrey Bogart, and it's set during the Second World War in Casablanca, which is an area that lots of people have sort of ended up um, during during the war and are trying to find passage to safer places and Humphrey Bogart is an American who now owns a bar in Casablanca and a past love of his passes through who he's not seen in quite some time and essentially Humphrey Bogart has to choose between the love of his life and helping the resistance against the Nazis um, that's essentially what's going on in it. It is a classic film, it's very beautiful, it's um, very emotional, the actors are fabulous, it's just, it is a classic and I understand why it's so popular and why so many people continue to recommend it. It's also of course in black and white, but if you have a problem with black and white films, I mean, you're missing the point. But those are 
the films that I've watched recently I wanted to talk about. Um, I think I've seen a few others in between there, but um, those are the ones that stand out in my mind, so the ones we're talking about, really. If you've seen any of these films, I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. Please, please, let's, let's converse, let's agree and disagree. I would love to. Um, also, if you would like to see any more of these videos in the future, do let me know. Um, I do have a video on my favourite films I filmed quite a while ago, but it still remains the truth, so I'll link that if you're interested. But until next time, guys, happy watching, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!